Hello everyone, I am Keshamurthy YC, working as an assistant professor in Department of Mechanical Engineering, RVCE. Today I will be giving brief introduction about bolt and nuts as well as riveted joints. Later I will be showing you how to model bolt and nuts as well as riveted joints in SOLIDWORKS. Outline of my presentation is, so initially I will be giving introduction to bolt and nuts as well as I will be talking about applications of bolt and nuts. Similarly, I will be talking about riveted joints also. Later, I will be showing you how to model external bolt and nut in SOLIDWORKS as well as 3D modeling of riveted butt joint with double cover plate in SOLIDWORKS. So the introduction to bolt and nuts. So bolt is a cylindrical piece having a particular shape at the head. So you can see this. This is the head portion of the bolt. Similarly, you can see the other end of the bolt, which has a thread portion. So the thread will be depending on the length of the bolt, it will be applied. So later I will be explaining till what extent it will be applied. So right now on this bolt, you can see the entire length of the bolt, we have done external threading. So this is called external threading. Similarly, in nut, we have internal threading. You can see the internal threads. So both internal <coughs> and external threads can be mated easily. So the bolt and nuts can be assembled. So in between this bolt and nut, I can place any two or more objects and I can clamp them or I can hold those two components easily with the help of bolt and nut. Similarly, we have a washer also, which has to be inserted in between bolt and nut so that the clamping or the gripping force will be more on the object which we want to hold. You can see here. So this is a washer and this is a nut which can be assembled. Right so now you can see the head portion. There are six sides on this head, so that's why it's called hexagonal head. Similarly, we have a square headed bolt like that. Next thing is, so you can, as you can see in the images, there are a hexagonal head bolt. Similarly, square headed bolt. The applications of the square headed or hexagonal uh, headed bolt, you can see here the flanges. Those two flanges are holded by those n number of bolts. So who will decide this number of uh, bolts is depending on the forces which are acting on the flange we can decide the number of bolts which is required to hold those two flanges together. Similarly for structural applications as you can see here there are metallic plates which are holded together by bolt and nuts. So these bolt and nuts act like a temporary joint. It's not a permanent joint. It's a temporary joint which will help us to hold the metallic objects together. So now we will go to the nomenclature of the bolt nut. So as you can see here in the head portion, this is the external head. Easily we can identify there are six sides, but whereas only three sides have been seen in this front view, you can see the nominal length. So this is called the length of the bolt. The nominal length is the length of the bolt. Similarly, we have the grip length. This is where the metallic objects will be hold it together here, exactly at this region. This is called the thread portion. Similarly, we have a nut okay similarly we have a run out the shank the radius as well as the thread so this is a thread length nominal length grip length this is about the nomenclature of the bolt and nut now similarly next topic is uh, riveted joints where uh, you can see this is a small rivet these rivets are used in various fields this is zero space field where for wing structure they use similarly we have for a bridge we they use Similarly, for a lamp post, there are so many applications of this of riveted joints, but this is not a temporary joint. It is permanent joint. It's a permanent joint. What's the difference between temporary and permanent? Temporary joint means we should not break. We should not break the fastener while disassembly. You can see here easily I can disassemble the bolt and nut. So that is why it's called temporary joint. Whereas when I do the riveting, Without breaking the rivet, I cannot disassemble the components. That is why it's called permanent joint. So this rivet has basically three portions here. As you can see, the head portion, the shank portion, and the tail portion. There are three regions in this rivets. In the next slide, I'll be showing you how riveting is done practically. So if I give you a rivet, how do you do the riveting? So I'll go to the next slide so that you can see clearly. So this is done using similar to your forging process where we have two sets of dies which are placed. We can see one die at the bottom. Similarly, we will keep another die on the top. We will heat the metal and we will apply the force from top. So there are two dies. One is for holding the rivet. The other one is by applying the force from top. 
Now you can see the metal plates. You can see these two metal plates have been joined with the help of the rivet. This is the permanent joint. If you want to disassemble, disassemble these two components, we need to break the rivet. Then only you can disassemble different types of rivets. Because what we have come across is a solid rivet. Similarly, in aerospace field, you can find hollow rivets. Whereas it, called, it is also called as tubular rivets. Similarly, we have uh, blind rivets, threaded rivets. Depending on the applications, they use it. Wherever you want to reduce uh, the weight of it, we can go for tubular structure. At that time, you need to make sure that the load which is acting on the rivets is minimal. Why? Because this kind of solid rivets can sustain very high load. So split rivet is used for commercial purpose. Similarly, uh, the threaded rivets. There are so many number of applications. So n number of rivets are there. Next, we'll go to the classification of different types of riveted joints. So how many types of riveted joints can be made? So the famous Eiffel Tower has around 2.5 million riveted joints, which are holding 12,000 metallic pieces. So you can think of the structural stability which it can sustain even uh, after uh, riveting. Riveting is done after drilling a hole. So after drilling a hole, we insert the rivet and we do the riveting, right? So the types of joints which can be done. The first one is the lap joint. The second type of riveted joints is called butt joint. So let me go to the next slide and explain what is lap joint. If I place two metallic objects or plates, one above the other, one above the other, and I should drill a hole, then I should do the riveting. These types of joints are called lap joints. If I have a single row of rivets, it's called single riveted lap joint. Similarly, if I have two rows of rivets, it's called double riveted lap joint. Why lap joint? Because we have kept one plate on another. Here, the type of arrangement is also very important. You can see here the arrangement is similar to the first two rows are same. So it's called chain type. Similarly, if I place it in a zigzag manner, it's called zigzag type. Double riveted lap joint zigzag type. Now let us go to butt joint. Butt joint here, the plates which we want to join, you can see here we have placed it adjacent into each other, next to each other. It is not placed above or below, it is next to each other. And we have placed one plate above it, which is called cover plate which is called cover plate. This cover plate will hold the rivets as well as the butt plates. Why it is called single rivet in spite of having two rows? On each butt plate, we have one row of rivets. That is why it's called a single riveted butt joint with single cover plate. Similarly, we, have, we can have double cover plate. You can see one cover plate on top, the other cover plate at the bottom. It's called double cover plate. So you can see the butt plates are exactly in the middle. Similarly, we have one row of rivets on one butt plate. Similarly, we have another row of rivets on the other butt plate. That's why it's called single riveted butt joint with double cover plate. With a double cover plate. Okay. Next one is double riveted butt joint with single cover plate. You can see here there are two butt plates. On top of that, we have one cover plate. So how do you differentiate butt plates? A very important thing is this line. This line differentiates that there are two plates which are kept next to each other. Similarly, here you can see there are two plates which are kept next to each other. That is why the type of hatching is different here. The 45 degree, one is hatched in this direction, the other one has been hatched in this direction. This gives you indication that this is butt plates which are kept next to each other. Here also you can see there are two butt plates. On each butt plate we have two rows of rivets. So that's why it's called double riveted. And the type of arrangement is zigzag. If you have a similar pattern of rows, it's called chain type. Clear? Next, I'll be giving demonstration in SOLIDWORKS how to model hexagonal headed bolt nut with washer in SOLIDWORKS as well as I'll be giving demonstration of riveted joints in SOLIDWORKS.